After you've completed the sitting blood pressure and heart rate and timed your pulses, the second thing you want to do is have the patient stand for two minutes to allow the blood pressure to equilibrate and the heart rate to stabilize. And then if you don't have a difference in the two arms, go ahead and use your left arm as your pressure when you're standing. So it's the same technique. Uh, remember the cuff is appropriate size. Um, I'm now going to, and a lot of times you'll have a problem with this if the patient's really tall or too short, it's hard to get this locked in. So what I'd have in all the exam rooms, I have a step stool. And I have either I stand on it or they stand on it. If I have some six sixers, you know, they're going to be like this. <laughs> if I get a real short person, you, can, you may put it on your shoulder. Play around with it, but the key thing is to make sure that the arm is, is, uh, is totally level with the heart and it is supported. So if I have, to have a short person, you can see that's a little bit up for him, but if I lock it in here, I'm good. Okay? So same thing. We're going to use the bell. All right, so I got him locked in. Completely relax. Close your eyes. Rhythmic breathe. Now, one other thing I want to mention, you notice I tell him to close his eyes and breathe rhythmically. If a patient has any visual stimulation, it will increase their blood pressure. If they're talking, it will increase their blood pressure. If they're thinking, it will increase their blood pressure. So you tell them to rhythmically breathe and it activates the sympathetic, parasympathetic tone better and it gives you a more accurate reflection of pressure. But if their mind's going 100 miles an hour, you're going to get some differences. So the pressure's checked and then check the pulse rate. Now what should the pulse rate be when you go from from a sitting to a standing position. It shouldn't change more than 10 beats per minute. So if it's more than 10 beats per minute, then you're usually dehydrated or you've got some autonomic dysfunction. Uh, if the pulse rate doesn't change, that's not normal because uh, that implies there's something wrong with baroreceptor tone or autonomic function. The other thing that you'll find is a lot of times the patient will transiently get dizzy when they first stand up because their pressure will drop and it comes back up or if they keep standing, it starts to fall. And this is the biggest thing I've seen. People are referred to me who have hypertension, and I check it when they're sitting and lying. It's, it's either normal or high, but when I stand them up, the bottom drops out. These are people who have autonomic dysfunction. So if they give you that history that, you know, they're okay when they first get up, but after about five minutes, they're dizzy, make them stand longer, and their pressure may keep falling. And that'll be a demonstration they've got autonomic dysfunction. The heart rate typically will not go up in a patient who has autonomic dysfunction. So let's say his resting heart rate is 70. I stand him up and it's 70 and his pressure's dropped, you know, 30 to 40 points systolic, but he's, he's not having any symptoms, but his pulse rate didn't accommodate for that reduction. That's autonomic dysfunction. And that's the key finding is the discrepancy between sitting and standing heart rate and a change in blood pressure.